All right, our first trick is going to be quickly squaring any number that ends in 5. Calculating things like 35 squared, 75 squared, 115 squared really quickly. It's a quick four-step process and it's even less than that because I broke it down. All you're going to do is chop off the 5 from the number, add 1 to whatever number you have left over, multiply that leftover answer by whatever you got from up there, and then you're going to add 25 to the end. Chop off the 5 and multiply whatever number is left by one more than that number. Let's do that a couple times here. 35 squared, it's my favorite number to square by the way. We're going to chop off the 5, you're left with 3. 3 times 4, that's one more than 3, is 12. So I write down 12, and then I just add 25 till the end. 12, 25, where's my calculator? Let me prove to you that this works. On 35 times 35 equals 1,225. What a beautiful system. Let's let that camera refocus here. 75, come on camera, refocus for me. There we go, 75 squared. Chop off the five. Seven times eight is 56. 56, 25. That's it, you're done. 115 squared, it works no matter how many digits you have. Chop off the five, you get 11. 11 times 12 is 132. Do you remember your times tables? Because it'll be helpful if you're actually trying to do this kind of thing. And it's 13,225, because I just add 25 to the end. That's it. Why don't you try? Why don't you calculate 65 squared for me? That was me looking at my watch. Chop off the five. Six times seven is 42. That gives me 42.25 and I'm done. Are you curious why this works? If you're not, then you might as well stop here. But any number that ends in five, like 35, can be written as whatever the number is without the five times 10, because that's what moves it to the tens digit plus the additional five. That works for 75, which is seven times 10 plus five. And it works for multiple digit numbers like 115. That's 11 times 10, 110 plus five. So any number that ends in five can be written as 10 X plus five, where X is a whole number. If X was a decimal, then we would end up with some left behind that would interfere with the ones digit and it wouldn't end in five anymore. So what happens when you square this? Well, squaring a binomial works with foil or if you're, uh, if you're, you know, far enough advanced in math, you might just have a shortcut for completing or calculating the perfect square triomial for this, but I'm just going to foil it like you probably learned to do in school. 10x times 10x is 100x. 10x times 5 is 50x. 5 times 10 is another 50x. And 5 times 5 is 25. I'm going to collect my like terms. I get 100x squared plus 100x plus 25. And the fact that both of these have a coefficient of 100 is the key to why this works. I'm going to factor that 100 out for you, leave myself with x squared plus x plus 25. And because x is a whole number, this x squared plus x ends up being a whole number. And because I'm multiplying it by 100, it means whatever number I get here will always end in two zeros. This ends up being in the hundreds place. And so the 25 will be undisturbed every single time. Whole number times 100 gives you an even 100. And when you add 25, you get that many 100 plus 25. In fact, the extra trick to this is that I can factor out an extra x from this portion and it ends up being x plus 1. So. It is the original number x, that was the number without the 5, see? The original number times one more than the original number, all moved to the hundreds place, and that is accomplished by simply tacking 25 onto the end of it. What a beautiful rule, and in under five minutes. Best of luck.